Chris Tanev has officially been traded from the Texas of Canada to the actual state of Texas. Your Locked On Flames, your daily podcast on the Calgary Flames. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this trade-tastic episode of Locked on Flames. As always, I'm your host, Jess Belmosto, and thank you so much for joining me here today, as well as my partner in crime, Nick Zeraris. Nick, how you, how you holding up? I'm mad at the general managers, man. Don't they know the rest of us have jobs <laughs> that are dependent on them doing their jobs? <laughs> We have real jobs that we have to make happen based on their performances. So we're going to talk a lot about uh, last night's trade that happened with Chris Tanev going to the Dallas Stars. And you're going to want to stick around for that. So make sure you're subscribed to Locked on Flames wherever you get your podcasts. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On for $20 off of your first purchase. We talked about it yesterday that Dallas would be probably the best fit for Chris Tanev. And an hour and a half later... It happens. Possible listener of Locked on Flames, Jim <laughs> Nil. Thank you. Uh, Thanks, yeah, guys. It, it's a slam dunk. They need defensive help, especially on that right side. I mean, God bless Mira Heiskanen, but I'm sure he's very happy he's going to get to play on his natural side more than likely for the first time in like two years. I mean, this is somebody who's so good that they've asked him to play on his offside to accommodate less talented guys, whether it was Ryan Suter, Essa Lindell. This year, they've done it with Thomas Harley, who's good. But in an ideal world, you're going to put your best player on their natural side that's going to deepen the rest of your lineup, push everybody down a slot i know they're getting healthier i know nils lundquist skated today he hasn't been in the lineup for quite a while and dallas already has one of if not i think they do but if uh, you disagree they have one of the best forward groups in the entire league the defense has been an issue and jake ottinger you know goalies we- goaltending's weird it's up and down it- he's liable mm-hmm. to get hot at any time but defense was a clear need for them absolutely and i think that Dallas is so fascinating to me because they went to uh, the Stanley Cup final in 2020, right? No. Yeah, they, they went yeah. the first year in the bu- they went in the bubble. They played Tampa the Bay bubble. in the bubble in 2020. Yeah, where Tyler That's Sagan right. was playing on like one leg and everybody was really hurt. Yeah. Yeah. So they went from that to ki- still competitive. Yeah. But hanging around um, to really solidifying themselves as one of the top five contenders for the Stanley Cup. And th- I think that that's great, um, you know, asset management and just doing your job proactively rather than reactively and actually like completing and following through with your vision. No, Dallas is a great example of how to how to use what you you're good at. You know, we talk a lot about that the Flames are going to struggle to bring stars to Dallas. Dallas was able to acquire stars whether it, through the Sagan trade and they developed Jamie Ben, and then the bulk of their team is guys they've drafted over the years or guys they've you know they've acquired in trades. You, you look back through their recent history, a lot of their key players are you know mid round picks. I mean, Rupe Hints is a second round pick. Amira uh, Heiskanen is really their only high-end draft pick you know he was third overall other than that we're talking about guys in the teens the 20s or you know second third Mm -hmm. fourth even fifth rounders playing pivotal roles and when you're a team like the flames that's got to be your model you have to nail your amateur scouting and draft guys who are going to be able to key be key contributors yeah and um i think that that is definitely uh, an area where the flames could bulk up and you know start putting a little more uh, a few more experts out there but uh good for Chris Tanev you know he told Craig Conroy that he wanted to win and Conroy didn't he didn't send him to Toronto he sent him to an actual you know 
contender with a pretty decent return. So we'll get to the return a little bit more next segment and later on, because I think that tells you a lot about what the Flames are thinking, especially if you caught uh, Conroy either on Jeff Merrick's show today on Thursday when we're recording it or on the hit the hit he did for the Flames social media team last night. But as far as just it happens, the thing I find so interesting is that the other teams that were reportedly in on Tanev, now they have to pivot somewhere else. There's no clear cut, like obvious next guy up in that spot. I know there's uh, Sean Walker on the Flyers and the insiders, God bless them, are trying to make Matt Dumba a thing, even though Matt Dumba has been awful in Arizona this year. (laughs) But it it seems that there's no clear cut next right handed defenseman up. So I think we're going to see some creativity over the next week and a half. And these are fundamentally uncreative people. So this is where we'll see some interesting things. Yeah, this is where, you know, we talk about the Flames kind of throwing weird combinations and doing whatever to the wall uh, to to learn and to, you know, assess their players. Teams are going to be doing that to uh, make the playoffs and to hope that this guy playing on his offside uh, will work through however many weeks they decide to stay in the postseason for. Yeah, ultimately... The deadline is, and I said this on yesterday's show, and I'll reiterate it now, it's a natural flashpoint because this is a time of year where everybody's got an opinion. Everybody plays fantasy hockey. Everybody plays the video games where they think they could do this job. I mean, I I was having a conversation with somebody on Twitter yesterday, and in the reply, somebody sarcastically said, you Twitter GMs think you know everything. And that's not the point. The point is we're having a conversation about it because it's a, it's a glimmer into how people think. And we don't generally understand how these people's thought process all that well, because it doesn't behoove them to let cue the rest of us in on how they think. So I, I find it useful as a thought exercise, you know, to explore how other people think, especially when it comes to stuff like this, like problem solving and team building, because there's no one way to do this. So in analyzing it, comparing it to the way other people do it, you start to get a more clear picture of the league at large. Yeah, and I think that that brings an entirely different perspective to the table as well because like we've talked about fans are our fans. Like that irrational thinking is natural. It is part of the identity of a fan and it might be hard to like remove yourself and put yourself in a business decision making spot. And I don't know, I really, I've come around to a lot of uh, the trade stuff with Markstrom because, yeah, I enjoy the, I enjoy the guy. I think he's a great goaltender, but they trade him. It's ultimately going to help the long term picture. And that's what that's what we're going for. Not just right now. Absolutely. You know, we talked about it last week, the idea you need to be long, short and medium term planning and all your decision making. And the last thought we can leave on this topic before we switch gears and change segments. You're not just making decisions for right now or next year. You know, I I know a lot of people get caught up on the idea of, well, what does this mean for next year? It's not just about next year. And that's really the thing a lot of fans lose sight of is most of us can do that. You know, we can do this year and next year as far as our planning and our conceiving. But it really seems like in the types of players that the Flames are prioritizing in the ages of those players and the picks, it really does feel like they're setting up for the year after that and the year after that, as opposed to just this upcoming season this upcoming October which is nice to see because again it's not just the short-term tunnel vision but coming up next we are going to dissect the trade between the Calgary Flames and the Dallas Stars and we will be right back after this You shouldn't have to worry when you buy tickets to your next big event. Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, theater, comedy, and music events near you. With killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, view from your seats, and their best price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. I love the fact that you can see where you're sitting and the view from your seat as well as that all-inclusive pricing. So I'm not, um, I don't have a heart attack when I see $68 in fees. It's all, it's all right there. Um, 
Game Time is the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase. Um, you can buy tickets in two seconds with two taps. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On for $20 off of your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Thanks, everyone, for sticking around and hanging out with us on today's episode of Locked on Flames. Make sure you're subscribed wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube because uh, this is just the first domino to to fall, I guess, uh, in this trade deadline stuff. Eight days yeah. Away. This is the exciting time of year because, like I said, everybody thinks they can do this to some degree. Everybody thinks they have a decent understanding of what players are worth. And it generally makes for the most engaging content because this is stuff people feel they have the strongest grasp on, which is generally what they're going to engage with the strongest. Yeah, absolutely. And like I have said from the start of the season, do not ask me to assemble a trade package because I... I can't do it. You're going to end up with a complete underwhelming return or something where you're like, please don't, we need to fire this girl immediately. But I think that the immediate reaction from fans was, oh, that's it? Because you get the prospect and a second round pick and a conditional third for the best guy the defenseman on the on the block that's it so speaking of that you, while you were talking you jogged uh, something i wanted to bring up but forgot about until now everybody's evaluations are different when it comes to these players especially at the prospect level because different people prioritize different skill sets you know when i do my amateur scouting which is watching videos on youtube of guys playing in junior hockey around the draft when i'm trying to get an idea i'm looking for really simple things i'm looking for how they handle the puck i'm looking for their skating those are the most tim- two simple skills and ha- those translate well if you can handle the puck and you can skate well we can figure out the other stuff we can teach you positioning we can get you in a system to highlight what you're good at that's what i prioritize it's very clear that there are other skill sets that other people prioritize more i mean the white whale in professional sports it but hockey especially is guys who are big and skilled you know every gm wants a guy who's six foot three six foot four but can also skate and play well and there are a lot of teams that will draft a guy who is six four six five six six etc based on the idea that they can refine the hockey skills because you can't teach size. Yeah. And I mean, I just, I understand where everyone comes from. I think, like you said, like everyone comes at this from a different way and what you find important might not be the same as uh, the locked on stars podcast host. So it's um, definitely interesting and I I like hearing what everyone else thinks because it gives me more insight. That's generally why I look at things open-ended. It's why Mm -hmm. I like engaging in these types of conversations because it makes you think outside of the way you typically do. And the trade itself in a vacuum, if you're looking at the boxes to be checked, like when we talked about the Lindholm trade, we Mm -hmm. wanted a roster player, a first round pick, a mid-level prospect, and then something else. The Flames got all that. They got everything on the checklist. You know, they got a roster player in Kuzmenko who may or may not be on the team long term. They got a first round pick. They got two mid-round prospects and an additional pick, uh, middle mid-tier prospects and an additional pick. Whether or not Bruce Dewich or the Finnish kid ever become anything, you know, what well, we have to wait and see. This trade, I did feel like they left a little meat on the bone. I do feel like the, condi- the There shouldn't be a condition on that other pick based on the type of prospect you got. If the prospect was a little bit better, a little bit more of a slam dunk, this guy's going to make the NHL. Okay, I understand the conditions on that pick being what they are. But this guy's got, you know, I'm not going to handicap it because I'm not a professional scout. But based on what I've read, you know, 
we're talking about a guy who may or may not be a third pair defenseman at best. And the Flames already have quite a few of those types of guys in the pipeline. I know Conroy said we wanted a defense first defenseman, and that's great and all. But those are easier to find than the mm-hmm. other types of defensemen. You know, there's a reason teams take chances on the 5'10 puck movers who play in the WHL. Because you turn one of those guys into a 50, 60 point guy and you have him under team control till he's 27, you are getting so much extra value. It is so hard to get good value on defensive defensemen because we can't really quantify defense yet. There, there's not really a good way to do that other than goals for and goals against. And even that's an imperfect understanding of where value comes from. Yeah. And plus minus is a completely useless stat in like nine times out of 10. So um, don't, don't look at that. Don't bring that into the conversation if you're trying to argue with us, but I'm, I'm just happy that number one, he's going, he's with a really good team. He, Chris Tanev has deserved that. He has played, uh, he's put his life on the line every single game he's played. And it's just, it's nice to see that there is an actual chance. And it's important to remember that, you know, these guys are humans too. And, you know, at the end of the day, we're all, trying to reach that uh, the biggest goal. And that's obviously for them, the Stanley Cup. So from a star's perspective, you hit a home run. You didn't give mm-hmm. up anyone on your active roster. You didn't have to take on the full salary. You didn't have to give up a first round pick. You're going to augment an already pretty strong team with a good play, an actively good player. And you didn't give up one of your slam dunk prospects. You know, I, I was talking, I tweeted during the week, I want Logan, I want Stankovin as my return because he's already ready to be in the NHL. Mm-hmm. You know, I want, and when you look at these prospect lists and these rankings, they're subjective when people are ranking things because they value different things. I mean, while you were talking, I went and pulled up the athletics write up and Grushnikov they have as the 10th prospect in the star system. And, you know, defense first defensemen are never going to have the benchmarks you're looking for in their development the same way you would for other types of skill sets like I I know a lot of people I don't know if you're familiar with uh, Byron Bader who does the prospect work where he does the cards where it counts on the there are certain like statistical benchmarks like mm-hmm. counting stats that you produce and you know your draft year draft plus 1 draft plus 2 etc and based on that they're able to calculate how likely you are to become a regular a star or That's- to flame out entirely uh-huh. And for a defense first guy, you're not going to hit any of those benchmarks because you're not putting up counting stats. So I understand what the Flames are looking for. I understand why they did what they did. And we're going to talk more about this in the next segment, obviously, because we're going to try and psychoanalyze Craig Conroy's decision making to some degree. (laughs) But from my opinion, the way I look at trades, especially as a rebuilding team, I never want the box of magic beans because the box of magic beans could be anything. They could even be Chris Tanev. You know, that that's all. That's what frustrates you as a fan. Like it's great. They've gotten all of these extra draft picks now and they've gotten all these prospects, but now it's on the flames to do all the hard work to turn these guys into something. Yeah, absolutely. And I just, I hope it works. out. (laughs) I mean, like we've talked about a lot, there's only like a certain percentage of, you know, draft picks that make it to the NHL. And the further you go into the draft, the less likely you are to play, you know, a certain amount of games or whatever. And we just hope that uh, the Flames can actually scout and, and draft well, because there's a lot riding on this. And we don't want to go back and do a trade tree in five years and be like, oh, that's, that's not good. That was bad. It's a real challenge when you're putting this together to try and have all your your entire vision together. That's why, you know, and w- I guess we should probably talk about the Markstrom stuff in the next segment, too, because, like, I'm trying to get a grab on what Conroy is trying to do. <laughs> but there are some inconsistencies here, which is what's made it difficult. 
And that is Calgary Flames Hockey. Coming up next, we are going to discuss Craig Conroy's uh, means the MO he has for this trade deadline. But first, we're going to take a quick break and talk to you about Sleeper. Regardless of where the Flames are in the current standings, I want to remind you that you can win big by playing daily fantasy hockey on Sleeper, the official daily fantasy app of the Locked On NHL Network. Sleeper is our number one choice for daily fantasy sports and especially daily fantasy hockey because with Sleeper, you can win 100 times your cash in daily fantasy hockey contests. All you have to do is pick whether studs like McDavid, Ovechkin, Crosby, or McKinnon will record more or less than their sleeper projections for things like goals, assists, saves, plus, minus, and more in a given game. To win 100 times your bet on sleeper, you need to correctly predict the outcome of eight player stats. You heard me, Flames fans. You can win 100 100 times your money playing daily fantasy hockey with sleeper. So start paying attention and nail your picks so you can start winning big. Use promo code LOCKEDONNHL and you'll get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. That's code LOCKEDONNHL. See Sleeper's terms of use for details and locational availability. Thanks, everyone, for hanging out with us today on Locked on Flames. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter at Jess Belmosto and at Nick Zararis. Do we want to start with the Markstrom stuff? It just doesn't make sense. Like, objectively, it does not make sense. No. And you can say what you want about managing the expectations of the guys who are still here, because that does matter. You know, we've talked a lot over the last yeah. two weeks of keeping the cadres of the world, the Hubertos of the world, the guys who are still here, keeping those guys engaged and that the rest of this season isn't just, you know, a punt. They're not just going to let it linger and waste away, that they're going to get something out of these last 20 games. That's not lost on me. I don't disagree with that. And I understand that mindset. <laughs> But at the same time, does that mean you're going to extend Noah Hannafin now? Because no. because that like uh, if you're not <laughs> going to extend Hannafin, there's no point in keeping Markstrom. There's no logical point in keeping Markstrom from a futures from a the direction of the team standpoint that is purely to keep the guys on the team that are still here happy yeah. that is the only reason you do that and i don't know if that matters enough in the long term direction of the team i mean is the team happy you traded Lindholm, that you traded Tanev, that you traded Hannafin? Like, is one more guy going to be the death knell <laughs> for keeping this group engaged? That's what doesn't make sense to me here. Like, we've said a lot, no half measures, no half measures, turn this guy into something. And maybe there's some conjecture, some truth to the idea that they're trying to keep guys in, involved and that they don't want the rest of the season to kind of just waste away. Mm-hmm. But man, is this frustrating because it's a mixed message. Yeah. And it again, it just it doesn't make sense because, yes, while he has the no trade clause, he has told you that he would he's willing to move it or wave it rather. So do something, spruce something up, call your friends. Call Jersey back. What like I don't understand what changed. Is it because they've been playing well and they're like, oh, maybe maybe we can flirt with a playoff spot? No. You were five points back at the start of the month, and you're still five points back from that second wild card spot at the end of the month. It's one of those situations where you're gonna have to piss someone off. And I understand that Conroy has really tried to be conscientious of not pissing these guys off, of doing right by them. That's probably part of why he sent Tanev to Dallas as opposed to some of the other potential landing spots, why Toffoli got to go to New Jersey, why Lindholm got to go to Vancouver. It's great you're a nice guy and you want to do right by these guys. But your job is not to be – is not to – try and be everybody's friend Mm -hmm. you know i i don't know if you saw what he said on jeff merrick's show but no he he said that for a few weeks 
him and uh, Jim Nil had gone back and forth trying to make this trade happen, and that the player, he, yeah, that he kept bringing up was, "We want Grushnikov, we want Grushnikov," and Jim Nil kept going, "No, no, no," and then circled back around and was like, "All right, fine, I'll give you what you want," and you, I. You want to be nice, you want to be diplomatic, you want to assume, hey, that these guys operate under a reasonable understanding of respect where mm-hmm. they're not going to be disingenuous. But at the end of the day, this is all leverage, this is all ego, this is all bluffing. This is right. all this is a contest. You are not trying to be fair to the other guy. You are not trying no. to give them fair value. You know, the stars are a well-run team because they draft extremely well and they have a bunch of good prospects that are almost ready to break through their ceiling. You know, if they were willing to give you this guy, that probably means they didn't have a vision for him. They weren't <laughs> that hung up on him. Yeah. And that's something to think about too, because it's, you know, You can look at it now and say, okay, this is where we see him and where, you know, where it seems fitting. But what what's going to happen two, three years down the road? Like, is this even going to be a good fit? Is is he even going to make it to the NHL? No disrespect to him, but like no one knows. And it's like you can't be a doormat. It's like you just don't be a complete pushover because then people are going to come knocking on your door knowing that you just want to make everyone happy and they'll take advantage of that and that's the thing man i generally speaking i don't take the comment sections on anything too seriously Mm -hmm. but the one thing people will the one gauge you do have about public opinion for a trade is when everybody is simultaneously saying, what is this guy doing? Not like they didn't get good value or, you know, they could have gotten more. They're all simultaneously saying, this is a bad job. That's generally a decent gauge of opinion when you get a, and it's not just, you know, it's not just the anonymous trolls who have the Trump mugshot with a, with <laughs> their team's hat on it. Like these are legitimate people too that mm-hmm. are, are saying, Hey, I, I don't see this for the, the flames. I don't think this is a good trade for them. That's a decent gauge of understanding perception. And maybe we're wrong. Maybe the flames do have the developmental acumen to turn this guy into something yeah i mean we we were wrong about uh sharon govich but but we talked about sharon govich a few weeks ago it's not that he wasn't a good player it's that he's inefficient you know Mm -hmm. on a good team sharon govich is a third liner the flames are having him play a lot more than that so he's gonna have the natural bump in counting stats and that's not to say they haven't gotten more out of him than i expected it's just when you play a player more minutes they're gonna get more opportunities to score you know so maybe this guy plays the rest of the year with the wranglers he has an outside shot of making the team in the fall at a camp but Again, you don't want the box of magic beans. And I, I, I'll i leave you with this thought to wrap up the episode. It feels like the Flames are going for the volume approach, that they are going to throw as many draft picks and prospects at the wall as they possibly can in the hopes that one of these guys hits. There's not a That's not a bad way to be if you're in this transitional period. But it's going to be really difficult for the Flames to do what we talked about last week, which is their medium term goal is to identify a star player they can acquire, Mm -hmm. whether that's through the draft or through a trade. Maybe they bundle all these assets together and turn it into a star player, but it's going to be difficult to get a star player drafting at the end of all of these rounds with these picks and getting these prospects who haven't done a whole lot at the developmental level. Yeah, so I we will leave you with that. Think about it. Let us know what you think in the comments. Uh, be nice and make sure uh, you rate the show on iTunes as well, because that, that's really nice, too. But that'll do it for us today here on Locked on Flames. Thanks for tuning in. Make sure you're subscribed wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube as well. You can follow us on Twitter at Just Belmosto and at Nick Zararis. Nick, do you have any final words for us today? Um. Take a break from cap friendly. I'm starting to see spreadsheets when I close my eyes. Oh my God.